Good morning. Good morning. My name is Neil. I am the pastor at this church, and I love to start off every service with some really corny jokes. So um, these are actually getting mailed to me at this point. These are handwritten jokes. Somebody in the church is really trying to help me out. Like, you need help. Yeah. I was a tailor, but business was so-so. There are three signs of growing old. One is forgetting things. The other two, I can't remember. Yeah? Yeah? I used to work at a juice factory, but I couldn't concentrate, so I got canned there. (laughs) I want you guys just to remember, a farmer is a man outstanding in his field. That's it. That's really bad. Um, did you guys hear about the new corduroy pillows, though? They're leaving headlines everywhere. (laughs) That's it. I promise. Well, today I want to leave you guys with one word. It's projection. Projection. I, uh, this word just like popped in my head about three weeks ago. And so I've just been dissecting it and looking at different ways that I am uh, receiving projection. But first off, I just want to say, you are so welcome here. Thank you so much for coming today, making it through. Yeah, give, give yourself a round of applause. If you're tuning in online, thank you for tuning in online. Thank you for tuning in. Um, it's just so good to gather together to sing. Isn't our worship team, they just do such an amazing job of just keeping guys a focus. Yeah. So fun. Life has just been really good, guys. Life has just been, like, extraordinary good. You know, things I've been praying for for the last six years are finally happening. You know, have you ever done that? You ever been in that season where you pray for something and visually it's not happening, but you know God's working on it, and then uh, you actually see it start to happen? And so, like, that's kind of the season that we're in as a family and as a church. You know, we've been praying and praying for to be a downtown community church and like things are finally starting to happen. You guys are here. You're beautiful. Look at yourselves. Look at you. You know, God's just answering prayers. We've been having uh, some miracles happen. Uh, we've had a couple of knees just completely fixed that people were going into surgery and then we prayed for them and their knee was fixed. Like just like I don't need surgery anymore. Um, uh, even a bigger miracle, you know, God turned water into wine. Jesus did that, remember? And he like actually raised dead people. Here's even a bigger miracle. Eight people signed up to be volunteers for nine o'clock city kids service. That's a big miracle. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Yeah, and I mean, I believe we, we said 12. We were praying, you know what, we need 12 volunteers. That's, that's a really big expectation. So we have eight, and, you know, I think the other four are coming if they're not here today. And so, like, God's just working so many things out, just dreaming with the Lord. And just in this season, I was having a conversation with somebody on a long car trip, and we were just talking, like, I wouldn't trade my life for anything right now. Amen. You know, like, God's just so good in and it's just good to be with him and have great friends and a great family. It's just, you know, like I wouldn't trade that for anything. I want to talk about projection with you guys. As, have you ever been around somebody that's just really encouraging and then all of a sudden you start to feel very encouraged about things? This is projection, that you can actually bring encouragement into your workplace, into your family, into different situations. You can actually invite people in on what's going on in your life, and it's a projection of, like, isn't God so good? It's kind of music in a verbal form. It's a praise to God. God's so good. Projection can be great, and it can be used in very positive ways, and it can also be a negative thing. 
I want to give a definition for what projection is. Projection is the process of displacing one's feelings onto another person. Huh. God's amazing, right? Displacing one's feelings onto another person. The term is most commonly used to describe defense projection, attributing one's own unacceptable urges onto another. I just can't help but praise God for how amazing he is. Like, that's my heart's cry. This can also be a thing of projection onto like negative. Everybody needs to know how stressed or how, uh, how angry I am. And you go into an office setting and like, oh my gosh, like who is projecting in here, right? It just completely changes everything. I'm having a horrible day. Everybody should know. This is projection also. It's my feelings. I'm walking with this. Therefore, everybody needs to be walking in that. And so today I want to talk about this word projection because it can be so highly used as praising God and it can also be used in our life where we're living from man's projections on our life instead of God's projection. God doesn't change his mind about us. And if we live from man's projections, sometimes we're like, we're all screwed up. We can't figure things out because we're trying to live out man's projections on our life and man, man's projections change. So some of us have had parents that have projected stuff on us. Well, we all deal with this. We all struggle in this area. Well, obviously, and you just like are living from that. We all drive Fords. No. Anybody? Okay. Just airing out my family's things here. Sometimes it's, it's not a thing of, uh, well, I think with social media, it's really hard not to live from life's projections. You're a certain age, so therefore you should have these things accomplished. Like you're still dealing with that. You're still not making six figures. Yeah. <laughs> these are some different projections that we have. I really believe, I, I'm, I'm telling you, like, I am in a new place in the last three weeks from just realizing, like, I'm living from so many people's projections, and I'm not even let God project on me, like, what he wants for my life or what he thinks about things. I'm just living from people. And so I really believe that this message is going to bring a new sense of freedom in your life, that you will leave living out God's projections, and he has high projections for you. Let's look at Peter, what he did with when people would try to project things onto him. We're in the book of Acts. Acts is the, uh, the book of taking normal, everyday people, fishermen, tax collectors, people from the town that follow Jesus, ordinary, unschooled people, and they go out and they change the entire world. That is the book of Acts in a nutshell. That through the Holy Spirit working through people, God can use anyone and everyone. There's no cap on what God can do, which is normal, everyday people that say yes to Jesus. And that's the book of Acts. Like, that's what we're reading. And so Peter's a big part in this because he's actually a leader. He's just called to be a leader. And so Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, and he goes out, and like he, uh, the first thing that he does is he goes to somebody and grabs it by the hand that has never walked in their entire life, and they stand up and walk, and they start dancing and praising God and going to church praising God. Peter had this experience, and Peter had so many experiences where God's using signs and wonders. You see it all through the book of Acts, because people are like really curious. They're trying to break down these religious things that are going on, and so what God does when there's a lot of religion is he'll use signs and wonders because with, with religion, you're looking for like, um, you're looking for conclusions, but what the, what the kingdom, or you're, you're looking for, uh, you have a lot of questions about things with religion, but with the kingdom of God, what it actually does is come up with solutions where you can't really put your finger on it. You know, God did that. Like these people's knee got healed over somebody just praying for them. Like, where do you put that? And so what, when there's a lot of religion, God will use signs and wonders to actually bring people closer to him. 
And so this is what he's doing with Peter. Peter prays for somebody who's been bedridden for eight years. He gets up out of the bed and starts walking around. And then another town hears that Peter's prayed for somebody who's bedridden. And so they actually call him over because they just had somebody pass away. And they go, Peter goes over there and prays for him. And he actually stands, or she stands up and starts walking around. And like she's alive. He, she's raised from the dead. And so God's using all these signs and wonders. And so like amazing things are happening in the church. It goes from 12 disciples to 120 to 3,000 to 5,000. The entire towns are coming to Jesus. This is what we consider revival. This is what we pray for. That's my heart. And that is my heart, that God would just move with people that don't know Jesus, that had no idea that Jesus was for them, and God was just wants to have a relationship with them, and people's lives just start changing. This is what we're seeing in the book of Acts. And so we have all that as our background today, because Peter, um, after he prays for Tabitha, and she's raised from the dead, he actually has this moment with God where God reveals to him, hey, Peter, I want you to actually share the gospel with more than just Jewish people. And so for Peter, that was a big thing because he's a very hard line. These are the, these are the rules that you have to engage with. This is why God's you, using me. And God breaks it down. Peter, no, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is, is I am for everyone, not just Jewish people. And so he sends a a message from Cornelius, and Cornelius says, hey, Peter, I need you to come to my house because I want to hear about this Jesus. And so Peter goes to Cornelius' house, and Cornelius and his family and the town all hear the message of the gospel, which is really simple. Peter made it really simple. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross, and then he rose again, and I saw it. I witnessed it. It's a real thing. Like, Jesus is alive and living, and Cornelius and everybody starts following Jesus. The Holy Spirit falls when Peter's talking, and then they get baptized. So, like, all these people are getting baptized And Peter had a part in it. And now he's coming back home. He's coming back to Jerusalem to hook up with the church and to, you know, to be encouraged. Like, hey, guys, this is all happening. So here's what happens. It says, the news traveled fast. In Acts 11.1, it says, the news traveled fast. And in no time, the leaders and friends back in Jerusalem heard about it, heard that non-Jewish outsiders were now in So the people that were on the outside are now included. It's not for just the Jews. It's for the Gentiles. It's for everyone. Jesus is for all. And so the news traveled fast because what happened was when Peter was baptizing somebody, somebody pulled out their phone and went Facebook Live. And and they saw these people getting baptized. And so people back in Jerusalem were like, this is amazing. People are being baptized God is not just for the outs or not the insiders, but he's also for the outsiders. He's for everyone. I just envision Peter coming back and I envision, you know, like Peter is triumphal return. God's amazing. Look at what God is doing. And listen to what Peter walks into. When Peter got back to Jerusalem, some of his old associates concerned about the circumcision called him on the carpet. What? Did you not hear the first part of this story and what God was doing? They called him on the carpet. What do you think you're doing rubbing shoulders with that crowd, eating what is prohibited and ruining our good name? What do you think you're doing, Peter, ruining our good name? So concerned with man, what are people going to think of us? You're hanging out with people that don't eat the same stuff as us? They totally missed it and start projecting prejudice on Peter, as my good friend pointed out last week. They had already prejudged the Gentiles. They're Gentiles. They're not, they're not like us. And so Peter's heart changes He goes to the Gentiles. God does amazing things, and he comes back, and man projects prejudice. Prejudged. Truth be told, two or three weeks ago before this vision that God showed Peter that he's calling him to the Gentiles, Peter probably would have been in the same boat. 
Because that was his conclusion. That God is for us. It's not, he's not for everyone, but he's just for our little group. He's for the elect. So what I want you to hear today is, what does Peter do with this? Well, what Peter does is he gives one explanation. Can you guys say one? One, one explanation. Peter gives one explanation, and he says to this group of people, um, man, there's so many times in my life where if I walked into that, I would just walk away and be like, whatever, right? Okay, but Peter gives one explanation, and he says, guys, you got to understand, God showed me in a vision that I was supposed to go to the Gentiles and that I was actually supposed to go and follow and go to Cornelius' house, and I went. And here's what happened. When I got there, Cornelius knew I was coming, and their hearts actually changed for the gospel. They decided to start following Jesus. Not only that, but the Holy Spirit was present. When God's doing something, the Holy Spirit's present because the Holy Spirit is God. And so Peter goes and the Holy Spirit's present. Oh, this is what the Spirit's doing. This is what he's doing. And so he gives this explanation. And then he says, guys, God is for everyone. I'm a changed man too. Did you know that? That he's for everyone. And people got baptized and they received the word of God. And they started believing in Jesus. And I want to pick it up after he gives this explanation in Acts eleven eighteen, 18. It says this, hearing it all laid out like that, they quieted down. <laughs> I love that. And then as it sank in, they started praising God. It really happened. God has broken through to the other nations, opened them up to life. They finally grasped it. In the NIV, it says this, the same exact verse. That was the message. This says, in NIV, it says, when they heard this, they had no further objections. How many times have you heard the words, no further objections? <laughs> I follow some of some people's Facebooks. <laughs> Let me just say, this is like very foreign. No further objections. You gave one explanation, and then they go, no further objections. Have you, have, raise your hand if you're like, yeah, I've been hearing that a lot lately. Like, <laughs> people, it seems like everybody I'm surrounded with, that's pretty much, I give them a short explanation, and then they, yeah, they don't, there's no objections. It's not the case, is it? When the Holy Spirit is present in people's hearts in our lives, we can actually hear again. Without the Holy Spirit being present, without, you know, when religion is like just drived into our souls, it completely closes our ears to people's voice and we stop listening. But what happened was the Holy Spirit had moved in the church. The Spirit of God has been poured out on the church and all of a sudden the people were filled with the Spirit of God and where the Spirit is, there is unity. So when this driving force of prejudice came in and is trying to project onto Peter, Peter pushes back with one explanation, and then there's actually no more division. There's actually unity. They all started to praise God. That's how that works. They all started to praise God. They said this, so then even the Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Talk about a turnaround. I think this is a powerful passage for us. I think it's a life-changing passage Peter takes a step of faith, does something uncomfortable. Holy Spirit is with Peter, uses him to reach everyone. We wouldn't be sitting here today if this story, you know, this is part of our story, guys, that we're all invited into the, 
kingdom of God, that we all get a seat at the table. It's not about the religion. It's not about the duties. It's not about the checklist. It's about that. You just love Jesus, and he loves you back. So Peter does this. He gets pushback from people. He gives them one explanation. Say one again. One explanation. Their hearts change because of the explanation, and all of a sudden they come back into unity. When we're faced with projection, no matter where it's coming from, whether it's coming from work, whether it's coming from our family, whether it's coming from skeptics, whether it's coming from wherever projection wants to infiltrate and man's words want to be more powerful than God's words, I have an invite for you. One explanation, and then if there's not unity after that, then pray for the Holy Spirit to come because it needs to work. If you're a leader in this room, you will find yourself explaining yourself at all times. And what ends up happening is you're constantly explaining yourself instead of moving forward with the vision God's had for you, for what he has for your life. You just find yourself always explaining, trying to explain to other people that don't get it. One explanation and then move forward. One explanation, one comment on social media. (laughs) <laughs> maybe that's part of it. I've taken a social media fast for the last four weeks I'm a new man like I am I mean I care less what man thinks it's weird one explanation and just move forward because God's projections for you what he projects is love The Bible says that he pours out, he lavishes his love on us. He's constantly just pushing it out. Receive my love. Receive my love. Receive my forgiveness. Receive my mercy. Receive my grace. God just projects on us. And so we can live from that place. Not so worried about man's projections, but more about like God's projections. I'm living in God's projection for my life. Whether everybody gets it or not, I'm still going to move forward with what God has. So what I'd love to do today is um, if any of you identified with, wow, I, you know, I, as I'm explaining this, I think that this message is, is not for, not only for today, I think this is like for your week. I think this is for your life because you'll start your eyes. Once you realize the word projection, your eyes are going to start like, oh, my gosh, like they're really projecting a bunch on me. I didn't even feel this way. I didn't feel this way about my life. And now all of a sudden I do, you know, and you're, you're going to realize that stuff. So I, I really believe the Holy Spirit is going to do something new in you in that. But also today, if you if you feel like, man, I have been living from man's projections over my life for just such a long time, and it's just like weighed you down, I just invite you to go ahead and stand up, because I just want to break that off. I just want to invite the Holy Spirit to to um, to have your heart just completely radically changed today to live from God's projections, from His ways. So if that's you, I'm going to go ahead and pray. You can go ahead and stand. Come on. That's truth, though. Because, like, when we're receiving a lot of projections and all these weights have been put on us, we start doing it to everyone else. So that's the other prayer. Thank you for that. That's really good. If you found yourself, like, pushing a lot of projections onto other people because you don't feel like you're living up to your own, I invite you to stand up because I just invite you to just go ahead and repent. Just say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for doing that. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Oh, so good. Lord, we want to live from the place that you have us in. We want your voice to be louder than any other voice. 
that when we start to experience why we are feeling certain ways that we're feeling or uh, struggling with certain things that we're struggling with, Lord, I just, um, I just break off anything from uh, parents or family history or anything from um, even old bosses that have just really pushed uh, um, things on us that, that were totally not of you, just projected their own struggles or whatever that may be. Any, anybody in our life that we have listened to to determine the, the future of our life, Lord, just break it off right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just pray for your voice to be the loudest voice. And also, I just pray from this moment on, just even as we're here right now, Lord, that you would just uh, highlight areas of our life where we're like, oh, wow, I am just totally living from man's projections. I'm, I'm living out what somebody else's box that someone else has put me in. Lord, would you just break that off in Jesus' name? And would you give us ears and eyes to see that when, when, it comes in, when we come into contact with that, it's just like, oh, yes, that's exactly what's going on here. I'm being projected on, so... Um, I don't need to live that way. Yeah, new eyes, new ears. Break off any old projections, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Hmm. Lord, I thank you for your uh, goodness that, that we all get to live from, that we're all invited into, Lord. And so we just receive that, even receive that right now, just the goodness of God just how good he is and how much he just loves you right now. Just who you are right now. He just loves you. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I just want to just be... Um, I think that there's some folks in this room that have actually um, broken contact with some people because they didn't want to answer all the questions because you just got tired of answering questions. And so just, uh, just want to invite you even in this moment that if you've, if you've given, um, it, whether it's about your faith or whether it's about like the direction that God's given you, that um, it's just an opportunity to just, to just press into that and just um, trust that the Lord will just open those doors up again, even with parents, even with family members that are really close to you, um, that the Lord just wants to open up those doors again and can change hearts, that, that the Lord will soften hearts. And so um, just invite you to forgive and to just press into that, just to give a short explanation. This is, this is really why I, I believe in my faith. This is... This is why I believe in Jesus. Just trust him in that process. Yeah. It's a new day, guys. It's a new day. God's got amazing vision ahead of you. It's a new day. His mercies are new every morning. And this is it. Amen.